Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Catherine Horton. I've got some good news for you, an absolute scoop. Uh, before I tell you, let me just check the sound. Hello and welcome everybody. Okay, it sounds like you guys can hear me. Um, so today I've got something special to announce and I almost expect that the intelligence agencies would do their utmost to, um, to sabotage this or to ridicule me in one way or another. Um, what I would like to announce is that um, I have um, I've had the honor of uh, interviewing Professor James Fetzer, um, who is the, you know, I think the expert for me um, on false flags in the United States. And he has actually uh, recorded um, a four part interview with me where he's going through all the big false flags and we're analyzing them in detail and we tell you how exactly to spot a false flag. Now, this is almost like a training course that um, you know um, trains you up how to spot nonsense from the governments and how you can tell that they are really pulling your leg. And um, it's very important that you understand how they pulled up off this deception because the entire goal seems to be to take away guns and to pull off even more pernicious stuff. Now, all of that we are discussing um, in this interview and because I'm very, very sorry, guys, but because I have to crowdfund for court cases to try to stop this madness, um, I have a, um, decided to release that through Patreon. Um, but, you know, if you sign up on Patreon for um, $5 per month, okay, $5, that is the price of um, two coffees. Uh, well, here in Switzerland, actually, it's not even one coffee at the airport. You, you'll be lucky if you get that much. But anyway, so um, if you go to patreon.com, um, you can sign up. So patreon.com forward slash stop 007. And all you have to do is hit become a patron. And I am so extremely grateful for the people who've already become patrons. I've now got 89 <laughs> patrons today. And I'm so pleased because I'm 11 patrons away from my first 100 patrons. It is really amazing. I got very, very excited. And um, as I said, I'm using your support to prepare this court case, to support um, other running court cases pro bono as an expert witness. So that's what I'm doing. And you can see the um, first uh, video from of four has already been uploaded here. It is right at your fingertips and you can access it um, if you become a subscriber for five dollars per month. You can I also ask you, please, if you have, um, you know, if you are well to do or if you are not a very asset stripped and, uh, you know, um, kind of financially destroyed victim, most likely you could possibly afford more than $10 um, this month. Um, and if so, please, please, I need your help right now because I will have travel expenses. I've got a lot of court expenses and this is for my own case and to basically save my own life this time. And um, I really need your support. So I am bringing you this interview. It's a very long interview. It's two hours and it's packed. It's absolutely packed with the most egregious crimes that have been uncovered by Professor James Fetzer and his investigators. And the video is right here for you. It's called How to Spot a False Flag, right? It's right here. So please go to my Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash stop zero zero seven and they will find me i would be so pleased if i could possibly push up um my supporters you know to oh my god a hundred this would be just like crazy you know 100 people say yes you know we support you we support your court case that would be really really special so um that interview is, is already released now, but you don't just get that, you know, if you sign up, you will get the entire four part series, but it is absolutely densely packed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to release the videos gradually because I tell you there's so much material. If you see it all in one go, you will be overwhelmed. Okay. There is a lot. And actually the way I also had to split it, I'm so, sorry, I would rather, I wanted to say another reason why I had to split it um, and not just upload it to YouTube in one go is because the content of these um, interviews is so, how shall I say, so pushing the boat out, so revealing government criminality, like so in, you know, egregious government uh, criminality just uh, in your face with all the evidence right there i would be scared of um losing my youtube channel 
because that's what happens to everybody who's exposing these false flags, right? So I am very, very, very um, cautious and very um, careful this time, but it is an absolute bombshell series, I can tell you. So we recorded it more or less in secret, not telling anybody because we were very scared that we would be manipulated. And um, looking back, I really think that that was the right decision because, um, you know, uh, had had the intelligence agencies, I mean, probably we were under surveillance, but I really think that they, um, you know, they kind of held back because they didn't know how much was coming and they kept watching and none of it was released. So it was all very, you know, cagey. Um, but now we have it in the box. It's backed up. We have the stuff. We have the footage. The, the cat's out of the bag. That's it. We're going forward. End of story. And uh, it's even more exciting because at the end, um, I asked uh, Professor Fetz, uh, who's in touch. I should also say that the research presented is also pooling uh, the research of some of the best investigators in the world into the matter. Okay, so you will get top prime stuff all in one place and it just blew my mind originally we wanted to do one interview and that turned into a very long interview of two hours and then we decided oh let's just do a series and get through this until we're finished and we decided in the end we ended up making four four very long interviews and they were mind-blowing okay and during these interviews, we kind of interlace the false flags also with targeting and cartel signaling. And we're talking about everything and it kind of just starts to match up. So I am so excited about this collaboration. But at the end, I also floated the idea of, um, you know, trying to bring together an effort of shutting down the criminals and actually going after them in court. And you will hear much more in that video because uh, Professor Fetz is himself involved in litigation and he talks uh, much more about that. So it is, I think for me, an absolute, uh, you know, mind blowing series. It was a lot of fun recording this. So it's all on patreon.com. Please join me, patreon.com. I also put the link below, link below, link below. Click on the link now and uh you know think about it if i could tell you everything you know that professor fetzer's research for the last couple of years with the top investigators over a cup of coffee would you possibly buy me a coffee and you know buy yourself a coffee you probably would so if the answer is yes please subscribe 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 because um you know it's not your money's not even uh spent on coffee on fluid would be just you know necking but it's actually spent on a court case to shut down the criminality actually the worst criminality we have in our society which is this holocaust program so um you know now is the time to join and um there's a lot more actually over the coming uh weeks i'll have many more interviews there's another big scoop kicking off an entire new uh line of investigation that is already in the bag um, and that I will release uh, shortly thereafter. The reason why I swapped it around is because um, in the logical sequence, we have to start with the evidence for the false flags. And in the next videos from another top world leading investigator, this is going after, you know, going into more detail about how to go after these people. So it's building up, all right? Everything is building up to, um, to the court cases, to shutting this down, to helping the victims and going after the criminals and have them jailed. So this is why, you know, I'm staggering all this, but um, I, I really, I, I'm, you can see, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. It was a lot of fun recording this, okay? So we recorded uh, one interview per day um, since Thursday and we finished. Um, so now the, the first, um, we finished today and now the first interview is, uh, is being released now that you know everything is safely recorded so that's my big big present to you guys um uh, please check it out because we have absolutely everything so going back all the way to jfk and then coming forward to the uh, newest false flag attacks you know there's some mind-blowing details in there really and then on a different topic, uh, after you had time to watch the uh, 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 Jim Fetz uh, uh, interview, the first installment of it, I'm going to release an interview talking about um, some more uh, current and smaller scale false flags, but nevertheless just as important. And um, I want to talk about just the falsification of our perception of our world and of news and how the world really looks. 
Now, in preparation for that, I would like you to um, check out a couple of our videos, very, very important. There's also, uh, by the way, there's actually another thing I wanted to talk to you about, which is, um, yes, now some, some people who are bringing, trying to bring truth to our world, okay, they have some, um, there's some very important interviews for you to study. I would like to point you to those so that uh, you get the, you have the same information I have and you can use that information to assess the world around you. I would like to point you to a current new emergency vigil for Julian Assange. You can see it on the hashtag unity for J. So that stands for unity for Julian. The Unity for J uh, channel, and it's also uh, mirrored on Susie Dawson's uh, channel. You can see her channel, by the way, here. I've got it uh, linked. It's live now. It's Susie 3D. Okay. And um, you, can, uh, you can see these two channels, and there's actually a live broadcast going on now. And during these broadcasts, they have been going for quite some time now. Okay. Uh, you will, if you look at the videos, you can see the, the past vigils that happened over the last couple of days. Uh, here, like this one is 10 hours ago, 11 hours ago. So there has been a very long series of, um, of just continuous vigils starting from Friday. And it was triggered by news that Julian Assange might be evicted from the embassy. Okay. So you can see the people who rallied around him, extremely high profile people. You'll recognize Ray McGovern. I think Bill Binney talks at these um, events as well, but you know, John Kiriakou as well, and many, many, many other people. Okay. Daniel Ellsberg, lots and lots of, um, you know, uh, top class commentary, top class interviews. Um, and of course, if you have, if you're just sitting down and watching this, you will be watching for two days. Okay. Some of these recordings go on for 10 hours. I think after that, they split them into one hour interviews so you can pick the people you are interested in. But I really recommend that you listen to people who you maybe might not be familiar with because um, they have a lot of good points to make. And I absolutely love these vigils. First of all, because I strongly support, support Julian Assange. He's one of the reasons we have, we can prove in court that the government knew about targeting. Um, there's lots of um, information about the targeting program hidden away in the WikiLeaks, extremely important. In fact, we need more researchers to go through the WikiLeaks documents because there's just so many of them, right? Um, but so I'm a supporter of Assange, but I'm also a supporter of um, people rallying around individuals and doing their utmost to get them out and in the process presenting, you know, their arguments, which are really the distilled thoughts of society. They are the distilled reasons why what's happening to Julian Assange amounts to torture and is something we really cannot have in our society anymore. So very, very important. I personally am also very concerned about Julian Assange because I think if the US embassy in Moscow was microwaved in the 1970s, you can bet that you know MI6 and MI5, who are a bunch of criminal bastards who've human trafficked me and assaulted me with direct energy, energy weapons, would also be assaulting Julian Assange. So as a targeted victim myself, I am extremely concerned about his well-being, but also I'm even more concerned of you know about his well-being when he's outside and might be arrested by the thugs from MI5 and basically put into an extraordinary rendition program and then dragged off to be tortured and then locked up by, you know, this, this organized crime cartel that's masquerading as the US government, but is actually anything but. Okay, now the other thing is also that you, there's a very important interview by Cassandra Fairbanks here, down here at bottom left. And Cassandra Fairbanks visited Julian Assange in the embassy and she had some astounding, you know, um, stories to tell about what she, I'm um, sorry, what she uh, witnessed in in the embassy. So that's this lady here. And um, she witnessed, well, she was basically locked in a room. She was, re she reported about the ludicrous amount of uh, surveillance. It's not even surveillance because frankly, an embassy is surveyed down to every every last square millimeter, okay? But in a way that you couldn't tell. So if you have surveillance cameras in your face, 
it means it is intimidation theater, okay? Because a surveillance camera that can see everything is the size of a pin, the head of a pin, okay, these days. So you don't need this shit. When you have big whopping surveillance cameras, it is Intel intimidation theater. And now apparently Julian Assange uh, was searched and his lawyer was searched from, you know, between his room and the conference room in this one building. I mean, come on. I mean, this is just fucking ridiculous. So in other words, what Julian Assange is suffering and what Cassandra Fairbanks witnessed was Intel intimidation theater that is now running rampant in that embassy. Okay. Now, this is not too surprising because embassy staff are traditionally Intel agents. So it's not surprising that they would behave like a bunch of bastard Intel agents using Intel methods. Nothing new to report there. But then the audacity with which they kind of try to mistreat uh, Julian Assange, right? For whom I bet this is just water off a duck's back, but still was just astounding. And um, when the ambassador, the new ambassador, uh, who has been thrown in. Oh, so for those people who don't know, Julian Assange, um, Julian Assange's old ambassador appears to have been actually quite a decent guy. And then he was replaced. And after he was replaced, the new guy seems to be what I personally would call an utter total asshole. Okay. And actually the old ambassador tried to visit Julian Assange and he was barred entry from his own embassy. That's what I heard from one of the um, previous vigils for Jay, right? I mean, this is ludicrous, okay? And again, what this is, is intimidation theater. It's a dominance display by criminals, okay? It doesn't follow protocol. It doesn't follow any sort of, you know, legal uh, legal measures. It is basically the the hallmark of thugs, who are put into high places and are using their little, you know, immediate power to trample on people's rights and try to intimidate them. I mean, to me, and I think to the world, what this should mean is that Ecuador has been taken over by the criminal cabal, okay? And this, the current ambassador seems to be right out of the criminal cabal's inner fold, which presumably also means he's got a control file, okay? And I, I'm not sure if I want to know what that is. But anyway, so please listen to um, Cassandra Fairbanks tell her story, her recent ordeal v visiting Julian Assange uh, in March. Very important uh, to, to know that so that you understand what's going on. Another thing, I can always recommend Ray McGovern. You can see that I watched his video. But I also watched John Kiriakou, who who really knows what he's talking about, right? Because he, I think, was uh, was tried and um, and convicted in this kangaroo court in the Eastern District of Virginia, which is where Julian Assange would be tried. So I ask you to please also watch John Kiriakou's um, interview. And I guess what I'm trying to say to you is I'm giving you all the pointers of where to get the information and I'll be discussing all of these on my Patreon channel, okay? So please become a subscriber if you're interested in my, you know, two cents worth of what I would like to say about these things. But either way, it's very important that you get your, get your head around what is happening because this goes to the heart of the rule of law, okay? It very much goes to the heart of the rule of law. And you can imagine that somebody for whom the rule of laws is, uh, you know, the only hope, you can imagine how close that is to my heart. I'm just looking around to see what the hell did I do with the book? Ah, oh, gosh. I've moved, I've, I've, I tidied my desk, which is something people should never ever do because you put all the important stuff, um, oh yes, somewhere away. Okay, so on the other side of the room now is a little book, right, by uh, Tom Bingham about the rule of law. This is a book every person should have, okay? The rule of law, it's universal. And what is happening to Julian Assange basically goes to the fundamental, it goes against the fundamental principles of the rule of law. Okay, so you need to understand what's happening in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. You need to understand who MI5 really are. They are agents for the Crown Corporation, which is a foreign Vatican-owned entity. They do not represent or work for the English people. They never have and they never will. Okay, so they are basically thug enforcers for the Crown Corporation, right? 
otherwise known as Octagon, otherwise known as the Jesuits, right? Otherwise known as the Masonic Front. That's why the heads of MI6 are traditionally Royal Arch Freemasons. But anyway, so you need to understand who they are. You need to understand, you know, the entire geopolitical constellation that brought about the newest terror, you know, program, Sezetsung's program on Julian Assange. And then you need to sit down and think about what you can do to increase the heat under the backside of the British government to basically kick MI5 and MI6 into shape, basically get them for the first time under British control. And the reason why that's important is only if MI5 and MI6 are brought under British control will I have a hope of not being murdered by these crown agents. Okay, so that's why kind of Julian Assange and I are tied together through the link in the UK and through MI6 and through MI5. That's why it's so important. We're kind of connected, right? So our fate depends pretty much on each other because we both have a really strong case against mistreatment. Now, you have to know even more about the intelligence agencies in Britain if you are anywhere in the Commonwealth or you are anywhere which the Commonwealth might want to asset strip, which is basically the rest of the planet. So in other words, anybody on the planet needs to know who these people are. And for that, I would like to point you to another um, couple of articles. Okay, so let me just share my screen. But this is not the tab I want to show you. I want to show you the next link. Um, okay, here. So the next item of news that you should uh, read through and make up your mind what you think is Prince William works with security agencies on attachment. Okay, this is a very short piece of news. Uh, basically, the Duke of Cambridge, aka you know Prince William, um, has spent three weeks on a placement with three of Britain Britain's security intelligence agencies. I mean, today when I read this, I really spent a lot of time on Twitter taking the piss out of this because I said, okay, so what happened? So he basically probably spent a week with MI5, a week with MI6, and a week with GCHQ. Right. When he spent the week with GCHQ, was he sitting next to the, uh, you know, online trolls who are following the three or five D's, which is deny, degrade, the what's it, the what's it, basically just shit on everything online that's sensible and is trying to, you know, do something proper and economically sound. Was he sitting next to the GCHQ troll factories? Was he sitting next to agents who are hacking into my laptop, hacking into other activists' laptop? Was he sitting next to agents who are uploading porn by remote control to people's computers so that they can be charged and falsely jailed, right? Was he involved in the hacking that GCHQ and NSA are regularly doing against the civilians? And by the way, GCHQ and NSA, are also they are in charge of the signals chain that is connecting the non-consensual body implants to the Lockheed Martin infrastructure. Okay, so was you know Prince William there when GCHQ was sending signals to the body implants, torturing and raping people? Right. I'm not quite sure if you're sitting in a control room in front of computers and you're sending the voice to skull harassment messages which for those people who don't know voice to skull is basically agents talking through an intercom system with the ear implants of victims and from the victims themselves i know what these intel agents love to talk about is basically sexual depravity their dick and how they're going to kill the victim or try the victim to get him or her to kill him or herself right that is pretty much 90% of the voice to scale content, along with homophobic, xenophobic, and misogynistic remarks, right? It's a Tzetzung's program. But I'm not sure if the agents sitting in such a control room would fall under GCHQ's remit or MI5 and MI6. Frankly, I don't even give a damn. But, you know, was Prince William shown this? Because voice to scale harassment is the most common form after gang stalking along with directed energy weapon assaults. And on that topic, was Prince William, you know, put into a gang stalking car and was he given the opportunity to shoot at a defenseless Brit in a car 
just driving to the shops or driving their children to school because that's also what happens every day on British roads. That's what happens to me, by the way, here in Switzerland and in the UK. Right? Was Prince William given a chance to watch, a, you know, a, a child rape for MK Ultra as conducted by MI5 and MI6? Was he given the chance of attend, uh, you know, a satanic ritual whereby a person of the establishment was refreshing his control file, probably rectally raping a baby or something like that, shortly before sawing the baby's head off? Right? Was Prince William shown the adrenochrome factory where people are people, children mostly, are being tortured to the brink of death? to increase the adrenaline content in their bloodstream for harvesting, right? Was Prince William taken by an MI5 crew out at night to implant single mothers in their genitals so that they can be raped henceforth by MI5 agents and the myriads of, you know, intel assets and people given subscriptions for rape via mobile phone app? These are the questions I would have for Prince William after his three weeks at the intelligence agencies. Because if this guy wasn't shown these things, you know, Prince Bill wasn't really shown anything that the intelligence agencies actually do. Was he shown how MI5 and MI6 import the drugs that are sold on British streets? Because that's what they're there for. Was he shown how, you know, MI5 and MI6 take people to children's homes for, you know, to rape the children there? Was Prince William given the opportunity to shoot poison darts at a British civilian just walking down the high street? Was Prince William given the opportunity to over overthrow a foreign head of state? You know? These would be my questions in a press conference, and that's precisely why I will never be invited to a press conference given by Prince William. Okay, anyway, so this is important for you to, uh, to uh, read and to ponder about. And then what's also extremely important for you to ponder in, uh, in, in your own time is this news that the son of MI6 chief, Alex Younger, has been killed in a car crash on a Scottish estate. Alex Younger is the head of MI6. He's the man who would be in charge of my uh, human trafficking to foreign governments and foreign intelligence agencies after I was implanted at uh, the University of Oxford in England and after I was stalked there overtly, I mean, covertly for about 12 years, but overtly for about, you know, a year and a bit, right? Um, before I was then presumably sold to the BND and the NDB, so the German and Swiss intelligence agency, but I was also abused by the Hungarian, the Romanian, the Dutch, the Belgian, and the Italian agency. Oh, and the French, of course, and the French as well, right? So Alex Younger is for sure on my shit list, um, but I also ask you, my data side, to have a neutral view into this article and just just make up your own mind what you think about this article. So the gentleman shown in this image is um, said to be Sam Younger, his 22-year-old son, who's said to have died in this car crash in a Scottish estate. And I would like to point out one thing for you to note. I mean, you should note every sentence in this. Um, but I think... Um, here it is understood blah 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 that the police find that there were no suspicious circumstances no suspicious circumstances so this is the story as it's presented son of the head of mi6 was 22 years old died in some sort of vehicle accident on a private scottish estate and the police don't think that's suspicious there are some uh, further images down here and this is Alex Younger, the man who um, has trafficked me um, into human experimentation, weapons research, and sex trafficked me, along with Andrew Parker and presumably also Sir John Scarlett. So uh, make up your mind what you think about all this. It's very, very important that you read this and you have your wits about because the, the process of analysis of this article 
will teach you something about the world we live in now okay now for your further education i would like to point you to something that is hot off the press and um, i would like you to um to check this out i i wholeheartedly uh, recommend that you um watch and carefully carefully listen to everything um ever said by um william binney the former technical director of nsa but i particularly uh also invite you to have a look at this new interview um here it's called the day of reckoning has arrived we have it all harley and bill so this is um a new interview that you can get here and um just listen to it and listen to his other recent interviews and um and make up your mind but he's you know one of the um top analysts in the world a math genius former technical director of nsa who left the nsa in disgust uh when it became clear that they were spying on americans and um yeah um and were highly criminal so he he left um very shortly i think weeks after 9 11 and he and his um, colleague uh, Kirk Wiebe took early retirement and got the hell out of NSA. And then they fought for years and years and years um, through internal channels and then also in the courts against this criminality and they are still fighting against this criminality, which is extremely laudable. So, um, you know, please, every single time these people speak, you know, you have to be there, you have to be there to support them because they're doing incredibly important work, okay? So um, my my heartfelt thanks to the to Susie Dawson and the others who are doing the um, the Unity for J, the vigil for Julian Assange, and I think you should um, also keep an eye on what's happening with the embassy. And I think the situation is when I listened to the last couple of interviews yesterday, uh, it sounded like the embassy is backing off because I don't think they expected quite a quite an international uproar and they are backing off from an evicting Julian Assange. It seems to have been a dominance display, but with these nut jobs, you never know. So, you know, I think public pressure has to be kept up. And I think all of us have to think about how we could individually actively increase public pressure because, hey, after all, we're the public, right? So nobody's going to increase public pressure for us. We as the public have to increase the pressure by one means, you know, or another. So this could be a bunch of things. Um, yeah, of course, you can always write to the embassy. You can also always write to the Ecuadorian uh, government because they do speak English. And um, yeah, just think about what you can do to help Julian Assange. But I think in the longer term, I find it utterly ludicrous that he was uh, carefully set up to be entrapped in the Ecuadorian embassy where he has now basically served a multi-year sentence being locked up and uh, not having access to sunlight i mean that's that's london for you right but being indoors and being just totally um locked up is absolutely not um not acceptable i think really what should happen is that julian Assange should be allowed to return to australia safely but for that to be possible first of all australia has to cycle out of its criminality which i can confirm is utterly rampant there as well right australia and new zealand went along with the false flags the sydney police has just the same masonic tiling on their caps as the Metro metropolitan police you know in london and um a lot of shit is going down there as well the genocide plans say that they want to i think murder three million australians or something like that in the next six years horrific stuff so but for Julian Assange to be able to leave the embassy, um, Australia has to be reined in, the US has to be reined in, uh, Donald Trump has to shut down whatever nonsense is brewing in the background, has to give, uh, I think, Assange a, a pardon and um, basically immunity as a journalist from persecution, which is something that he should be entitled to, right? And at this moment in time, the hoo ha is particularly big because WikiLeaks is the only uh, only journalistic outlet that is actually publishing the truth in large quantities uh, which creates a rather stark contrast to the entire european and american 
uh, media outlets, right, who have been uh, publishing lies. Sometimes they've even published, you know, cartel signaling and the advertisement and celebration of satanic rituals. So, um, yeah, it's rather rather shocking for people to see a journalistic outfit like WikiLeaks come along and then publish the truth that has rocked the world for some criminals. But anyway, so this is what I wanted to say. These are the pointers I'm going to give you. Now, please, 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 please make your um, way across, okay? Uh, make your way across to my Patreon site if you like what I'm working on, if you, um, you know, enjoy the sort of content or you think it's important, if you think that um, my, um, uh, you know, my work should be supported, then please, please, please go across to the Patreon site. And, um, you know, if everybody would support me to the tune of, uh, you know, $5 or something um, per month, then I could really go um, a long way with this. So uh, let me just show my um, Patreon site again. It's uh, patreon.com forward slash stop 007. Okay, so here's the Patreon logo. And um, please, please, please become my subscribers. Please um, help me take this number up to 100. That's when I'm going to open, I think, a, a bottle of wine and celebrate. Um, because also the other thing I should say is that um, when people support you financially with, um, you know, doesn't matter how, how little, um, it really means that they are putting, you know, kind of their money where their mouth is. And I was always um, trying to explain to people that while you only have a vote for, you know, your, your government leaders, maybe once every four years, you are voting with your dollars every day. You make a vote when you go and buy a coffee from a certain outlet. You make a you make a vote when you buy a certain newspaper, and you also make a vote when you don't buy a newspaper. And instead, you support you know people monthly who are trying to get content to you, trying to educate, trying to fight crime, and trying to support court cases. You know. So remember, every single time you open your wallet or you swipe your credit card or your bank card, you are voting. And you are voting. It's almost like, you know, if you take every dollar, every euro and every pound to be a vote, right, then you are voting with, I don't know what, 25 or, or 40 votes for a certain pair of uh, sports trainers, right, sports shoes. You are voting with uh, so many dollars for the tickets you buy, you know, for concerts and so on. These are all votes, okay? And actually, those votes are much more powerful in our world than the government votes, sadly. Or um, perhaps not that sadly, because it means that you actually have many more votes than you realize. And sometimes, you know, um, just two or three votes in that sense, you know, like two or three dollars uh, to a homeless person is for him or her the difference between, you know, death and survival. It's the difference between committing suicide because one feels excluded by society. One feels not wanted, right? Um, so be aware how powerful your votes are. Be aware. And know that you have the power of life and death, really, with your votes every single day. And use it wisely. And I'm telling you, buying yourself a big, fat, flat screen TV is not a good use of your vote because what you're doing is you're voting for brainwash machine that's actually a surveillance and indoor radar device you don't need that it's not really a wise vote you know and similarly spending um tens of thousands of dollars on a car that if you just buy it secondhand you know three years old you will already have saved half the price thereabouts right you will release so many more votes that you have in your life by just buying it, you know, secondhand after three years, right? Or maybe even older and using the spare votes to actually bring the things, vote for the things you want to see in our world. That's what I want to say. So anyway, I hope you guys are voting for me with five votes on Patreon. Please, please, please. I'm working flat out on court cases. I'm also supporting in the background court cases of other people. I'm trying to support as many people as I can pro bono because these are severely asset stripped victims. So I can't really take money from them. 
right? Um, and that's why I kind of have to work for free to save lives. So I need your help. And if you could help me, I would be extremely grateful. And I'm trying to give back. This is not meant to be just a charitable donation. I'm working hard for you. I'm trying to get together the links that matter, give you insight, the best insight I have. And I also just managed to bring you the best insight in the world about the false flags in the um, United States as presented by Professor James Fetzer, which you can find on my Patreon site, link below, link below. And also I would like to say, I will continue uh, putting out free YouTube videos. So um, also press subscribe and press the little bell next to the sub subscribe button so that you get notified about the newest um, videos. Okay, that's all I wanted to say tonight. Thank you so much for those of you who already have voted for me and are supporting me. I'm extremely grateful. And please vote for me for those who haven't yet. Please, please, please. I need the money because these court cases are difficult. Okay. And um, I wish you a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy it. You know, use your votes wisely um, in the coming week. Be very conscious about every single dollar and every euro that you spend. Just think of it in terms of votes, right? And um, think about, you know, what you want to put in, in place. Um, in the world because the world is changing. So you have to shape it right now. Thank you very much for listening. Have a wonderful Sunday and bye for now.